a business and financial expert, the CEO of Veslam Limited, Kenechuku Namani, joins me now in this discourse. Thanks for joining me, Kenne. All right, uh, first, let's start um, by looking on the suspension of the fuel subsidy removal, or which was uh, to take effect uh, two months from now. But the federal government has said that it will continue uh, with consultation before going on with it. Is this tenable or just what you think? Uh, is the federal government just stalling? Um, so to be honest, I just think um, this is the right thing for them to do, to actually put it on hold. Um, because the removal of, of fuel subsidy already planned by the current administration, it's almost like they are trying to um, put that in motion for the next ad administration before they come in. So I think it's something that the economic team of the new incoming ad administration needs to take a look at, first of all, before they can decide if they want to carry on with the fuel subsidy. And I think there's a whole lot that needs to be done first before they can even consider the removal, because... Removing the fuel subsidy, just like we discussed here on this uh, channel before, um, at this particular critical point in time, is not a good decision because what alternative are you keeping for or are you making available for people who cannot afford um, to pay um, for petrol or PMS at the current price is going to be after the removal? All right, uh, but then again, uh, the federal government, before now, before uh, NEC announced uh, the suspension yesterday, it talked about um, um, the grants that it received uh, from the federal, uh, from sorry, from the World Bank to cushion the effect of um, this removal that was supposed to take place in June. And of course, it also announced uh, uh, a 40% salary raise for Nigerian workers. Do you think um, those um, steps were actually in the right direction towards uh, cushioning the effect of the removal that was supposed to be in June? Well, we've, we've, um, in the past, we've seen, we've seen different kinds of um, funds created to, like, to cushion the effect of some policies that are being created by the government. For example, we saw in the recent case of COVID-19, where we had um, some sort of a fund that was going to use to cushion the effect of COVID-19 um, on Nigerians. But then we realized that so many people confirmed that they did not get those funds. So I think instead of getting um, a grant to cushion the effect of removal of fuel, uh, fuel subsidy, we should work towards creating a way to make sure that we have alternative sources, for example. We, um, if you remember, the vice president also had a time that he mentioned that there was a whole lot of energy being put into diversification. For example, the use of LPG and harnessing what we had with, um, with LPG. And then they went down to creating models where we can convert our cars from uh, from petrol to LPG or for it to be dual um, energy consumption, um, sort of. But then we've seen that they've made this plan and then they said that um, it's something that is going to actually kick off immediately. But in the past few years, we've not seen anything happen with that. So I'm trying to understand how it's possible for them to, you know, transition or uh, how they see it possible that getting grants to cushion the effect of um, fuel subsidy removal is, a, is in the right direction. I think it's more of um, whatever strategy they had with LPG, but make it a bit more private sector driven. I think that is the only way we can successfully move from um, this current um, subsidy policy to removal of fuel subsidy. Yes, I know you have said that um, there should be some sort of a meeting between uh, this outgoing um, administration plus the, with the one that is incoming. But then again, if we are stalling with the removal of fuel subsidy, because eventually the federal government says it will remove it, what are the economic um, impact really of not removing subsidy at this particular time? To, to be honest, <clears throat> um, I think anybody that is thinking of, um, um, you know, stalling or, or stopping the removal of fuel subsidy at the moment or pushing that conversation is probably looking at not just the economic impact, but the security impact. Mm -hmm. You know, a whole lot of Nigerians see fuel subsidy as a way where they are some sort of taking their own national cake from the government. So when you sort of take that away from them, and then with this whole thing happening after we're just coming out from this election, people will feel like they are being shortchanged, some sort of, and a new government will not want to get into government. And uh, the first thing they experience is some sort of um, national security issue because of fuel subsidy removal. Because take it or leave it, it's most likely going to happen because people are going to kick back. 
So I think apart from the economic challenge it's going to have, for example, the cost of production is going to increase because we don't have um, 24 hours power. The cost of transportation is going to increase. The cost of uh, production, for example, um, manufacturing, even the cost of healthcare is definitely going to increase because how many hospitals are going to be able to afford to actually either go green or probably pay more for however they are going to power their facilities. Mm. So these are the things that we need to critically look at before mm. even the new administration thinks of removing the fuel subsidy. I strongly believe the first thing to do first is to create an alternative. Getting grants to cushion the effect is, is, is it's just a temporary fix, but it's not, it's not going to have any, any major um, positive impact. All right, uh, just hang on um, uh, uh, again. I'll be back with you in a moment. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll leave the fuel subsidy. We'll come back and look at the Agora report, uh, policy report in a moment. Just stand by. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Business Insights continues in a moment.